welcome back. I want to wear, welcome via the Zoom line a man who wears uh, multiple caps. Uh, we welcome the chair of the TTCIC, also the uh, committee member for the... Let me get make sure I get all my, my, my details because I don't want to get any of the designations wrong here at all. So that's right, the ESG committee chair and the TTCIC chair. And also, we welcome the... Well, also wearing the hat for Pride TT, their president, Rudolph Hanamji. Rudolph, good morning. Thanks for the good time morning. and thanks for being here with us this morning. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. I hope I got all the designations correct. I know there's lots, 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 lots to deal with here. A couple hats. It's yes. fine. I'm happy to be here just to represent. That's right. Listen, it's a very important discussion because I know that, um, you know, it's the International Day Against Homophobia, Transphobia and Biphobia. Yes. Also, you know, many challenges within uh, your community. And the reality is there are those looking on this morning who might suggest, you know what, why are we even going to dive into this, this discussion? You know, what's the, uh, why this international or, or this global agenda is coming to Trinidad? But the reality is folks from your community were part and still remain part of our fabric. Uh, that's been the way it is for many, many, many years since Certainly. we have known ourselves as a republic and as an independent state. I'm just thinking now, knowing that you're pushing this conversation and asking, I saw even via the news, there is now that push towards legislation for, for, for recognition and for that equity, especially in the workplace and in various government institutions. Do you think we are in that place right now? Based on your momentum, based on your conversations, based on your observation, are we getting closer to that place to really have this important conversation? I ha I'm happy to report that we are getting closer. It it's been a long struggle, as you could imagine. Uh, when the Equal Opportunities Act was passed so many years ago, more than a decade ago, it was the only piece of legislation to our mind that actually excludes citizens, because it says in the Act, does not include sexual orientation. And therefore, up to today, JW, we cannot access protections at the Equal Opportunities Tribunal if persons, queer members of the society, are victims of harassment or they lose their jobs in the workplace. But why I say we're getting closer is because the private sector has actually taken the reins up where the government has not and has started passing their own policies within the workplace that protect not just their queer citizens and employees and customers, but all marginalized and vulnerable groups. And mm. that's why ESG, environmental, social, and governance frameworks are so important because those frameworks will now encompass what is called diversity, equity, and inclusion policies. And businesses are going to have to start reporting on these types of measures, which are called non-financial measures. And if they don't report on them and can show objectively that they're meeting certain criteria in these areas, they can actually be impacted in terms of investment, customer demand, and their supply chains. So. Businesses are getting serious about this. They've recognized that, as I said, both their customers and their employees come from marginalized groups like queer persons, disabled persons, neurodiverse persons, and companies are doing more in spite of the fact that the legislation itself is wanting. Yeah, so Scotia Bank uh, leading in that regard. I, I remember they being one of the first entities. Yes ready to step out in that And others have vein. followed. Hadco Group has followed, Anson McCall, even my own firm, EY Caribbean. Th these firms have long been proponents of human rights and inclusion, and they are now speaking out more about it, mm -hmm. and the smaller firms are following suits also. From, from reading the, um, the Guardian earlier this week and looking at the report with Ria and the team on news, I think that would have been Monday. I didn't even yes. realize you all were going through challenges with the TTPS. Could you, could you elaborate on that and what's happening with the interactions with the, the TTPS? The Trinidad and Tobago Police Service is one of those institutions where you find a duality of experience. So in many regards, the police service have 
supported the community. As a matter of fact, every year for Pride TT, they do come out in their numbers and support the parade. And there are members of all these diverse communities within the police service. However, there are still too many experiences where queer persons, for example, will go to a police station or seek police service and they may be ridiculed or turned away or told, why don't you, for example, uh, be a man and deal with it? And you, you get these types of tropes being thrown, especially at more vulnerable members of the community. Because as you would appreciate, JW, the, within every community, there are persons of different strata. And unfortunately, if you belong to the lower socioeconomic strata in Trinidad and Tobago, at times you are not treated equitably as someone else. So, and again, that is why DEI provisions, not just in the workplace, in the private sector, but in government institutions such as the police service would be very important because then they would have a standard framework by which they can operate and they can report on. And of course, PRI, TT, EY, the Chambers ESG Committee, and many other organizations are willing to work with these groups and organizations to assist in developing these types of frameworks. And in that regard, I've recognized that there is collaboration for the DEI conference this year, where other marginalized groups uh, are stepping in, and you all are, as it were, holding hands uh, shoulder to shoulder in the struggle, uh, like the blind welfare. I know they also go through challenges. I'm seeing Kaiso yes. is in the mix. Who else is part of uh, this collaborative effort for 2023? So it's the second DEI, Diversity, Equity and Inclusion Conference. And again, this year we're partnering, that is Pride TT is partnering with the Trinidad and Tobago Chamber of Industry and Commerce through its ESG committee. And you have groups such as the Hearing Impaired, the Trinidad and Tobago Occupational Therapy Association, they treat with persons with autism, for example, persons who have suffered strokes and have disabilities. You have groups like the Trans Coalition of Trinidad and Tobago, the Women's Caucus, Pride United, the Heroes Foundation. So what Pride TT tried to do was expand our platform because we understand what it is to be excluded just as you said, so do many others. So why not use the platform to engage corporate Trinidad and the target audience on June 1st is really HR and talent leads of any size companies mm -hmm. where they will hear firsthand from these marginalized groups and engage in a workshop that will be facilitated by EY Caribbean's ESG team where they can develop a DEI toolkit so basically when they go back to their companies, they can implement this and start making a positive impact on their employees and customers' lives. So that's what we're doing, as you said, standing shoulder to shoulder, because this year's theme for Ida Hobbit is together always united in diversity. Is there a safe space for someone looking on this morning? You know, they have recognized that they identify as you would have mentioned, um, the various categories here mentioned earlier. That's, that's the truth that they live in, mm -hmm. but people around them, family, uh, friends, the community is not as welcoming, uh, it's not as accepting. Is there a place someone can go to, to see counseling? Is there a, a community that they could feel uh, safe within, within their existence? Yes and no. So one of the things that we would like as a community to develop, and we've been having discussions with the authorities and private interests, is a community safe space, like, for example, a community center. These exist in other jurisdictions where, as you said, should someone be put out of their homes, which still happens, should someone become destitute, n not be able to find employment, etc., they would be able to go there or even if they, they do have a job, but as you put it so well, they just don't feel included in general society. So, for, so the yes part, fortunately, is that the community is very active. As you know, we have Pride TT celebrations every year, and there are many groups that do provide activities and events and training. So from time to time, 
persons who feel excluded can go to these events and meet their community members and build those relationships. And people tend to support one another for the most part. And that's why, again, these initiatives are so important because who knows, maybe we can all come together as marginalized groups and see something like this come to fruition because one of the marginalized groups is actually ex-residents of correctional facilities as well as conflict women which treats with victims of domestic violence, women who are victims of domestic violence. And many of these groups also require safe spaces, as you put it, where they can regain empowerment and have a more positive life as they try to exist in this ecosystem. I recognize it's a local discussion, it's a regional discussion, it's an international discussion, and we here in the media, the fourth estate, obviously being a mirror, being a reflection of the society, that's why we engage in this kind of discussion so that we could now share with the greater public uh, some of the developments. And as we look towards what's happening, I'm sure, Rudolph, you keep your eyes and ears on the ground with developments within the region. Are we leading in this regard, or are we way behind what other countries within the Caribbean space? Uh, is there anywhere we could take an example from, or, or are we more or less taking charge and taking the lead at this point in time? I would, I would like to claim that Trinidad and Tobago is taking a lead, and again, it's being driven by the private sector mainly, and also the way our society functions. I mean, a lot of bad is sometimes said about TNT, but if you recall that famous Calypso portrait of Trinidad, there's so much good that happens here. And yes, we can always pull from more progressive jurisdictions, but I hasten to add that even in places such as the, the European states and in the United States of America, for example, there are still challenges being faced, especially in the legislative world. So nowhere is perfect yet, but we can create a space, JW, where every creed and race truly finds an equal place, including identities, different persons of, of experiences and lived identities because we all have to build and we are all building together. So even having this opportunity to speak on the media and, and being able to partner with the chamber and, and host the DEI conference is in itself leading in many regards because there are places in the world where this conversation would not be happening. And in like Uganda, for example, or Russia, I might actually be arrested for having this conversation. So we must always place Trinidad and Tobago in its rightful context and continue to have the conversation. As we look to wrap things up, when is the DEI conference taking place and how can those looking on who are eager to attend uh, take part and be in the presence? Certainly. Today we're having a focus group session facilitated by EY at the Chamber's headquarters with all of the marginalized groups, and that will allow us to develop a white paper which will be shared with the government. And it will also be released on June 1st, that is when the actual conference is being held at the Chamber headquarters from 9 to 3 p.m. And if you are interested, if you're an HR or talent lead or just anyone in general from the public or private sector who is interested in diversity, equity, and inclusion, you can reach out to the Chamber, visit their website, or email them at events at chamber.org.tt, or visit pridett.com. You can Google DEI conference, Trinidad and Tobago, the information will come up, and we will be glad to host you. We do have a few spaces available, but act soon, because this is important information, and it's not going away. So your company is going to be benefited by this and really reinforce its commitment to its employees and, the, and your customers, and you will not run the risk of losing them. President Hanamji, any closing remarks as we look to wrap things up this morning? DEI 2023, remember today's theme is together, always united in diversity, and that does not apply to only marginalized groups. Let us all, Trinidad and Tobago, unite in our diversity and chart a, a, our way forward. So thank you very much for having us, and we wish everyone a safe and reflective Ida Hobbit. President of Pride TT, Rudolph, touching base with us on this Wednesday.
Keep us posted. All the best. Thank you. You too. With that, we get ready to take the pause. We come back and get the segments going. Uh, obviously, all the email information, the online information. We'll try to put the something to think about in the mix. And if time permits, we might even pitch the birthday brew in before 7 a.m. Because remember, after 7, it's the Bagel Talks. I want to be Bagel Talk. We listen. And this morning, Watson Duke is stepping in via the Zoom line. Very interesting conversations ahead. See you soon.